Hello and welcome to day 93 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the study I've done today is by Charles Warren Eaton. Um, we've done quite a few studies after Charles Warren Eaton. He is one of the predominant tonalists uh, that worked back in the area, era of its uh, primary uh, popularity. I'm going to read just a bit uh, today from a book I just got called Intimate Landscapes, Charles Warren Eaton and the Tonalist Movement in American Art, 1880-1920. to And this book actually came out before the other book by David. This book is by David A. Cleveland. It came out, um, you know, maybe seven years before his other book. So I'm going to read just a bit from it right now, page five. Charles Warden Eaton, 1857 to 1937, is one of the most important yet least known landscape painters to explore the toneless aesthetic, which infused American art during the years circa 1880 to 1920. Highly regarded in his day, a ubiquitous name in major exhibitions for over 40 years, Eaton produced a prodigious number of characteristically low-toned atmospheric views from which tonalism took its name, intimate scenes often at dawn or dusk limiting the ephemeral and poetic moods of nature. Known as the pine tree painter for his serial depictions of white pines of his Connecticut haunts, which is what we're doing today, by the way. Uh, that's uh, white pines there. Uh, of Goldberg and Thompson, e Eden filled major juried exhibitions in America and abroad with prize-winning oils, watercolors, and pastels. His awards included an honorable mention at the Exposition Universelle in Paris in 1900. The Ines Prize at the, of the Salgamundi Club in New York, circa 1902, and the Ines Gold Medal at the National Academy of Design in New York in 1904. A member of the Lotus and Salamundi Clubs, seabeds of American tonalism at the turn of the 19th century, Eaton studied with the important tonalist figure painter and champion of the aesthetic movement. Thomas Wormer doing at the Art Students League in New York. Eden gained early acceptance into the most progressive art circles in the 1880s, beginning with the 1884 exhibition at the prestigious Society of American Artists, where he exhibited every year until the Society's demise in 1906. He went on in 1890 to show with the Society of Painters in Pastel, perhaps one of the most exclusive and short-lived of American art groups, and founded with Childe Hissam, the New York Water Color Club. As recently as 20 years ago, Eden, like many of his contemporaries who had issues in presentism, bright chromaticism, were subjects with social and narrative content in favor of a quietist landscape art, was relatively unknown to the American art world, outside of a small circle of connoisseurs and dealers. Eden's life, like the tonalist style with which he was a master, was clouded in obscurity and misapprehension. We'll leave it there because I can tell we're running out of room on this video today. In fact, I, I played it just a little slower to adapt for that. If you'd like to uh, see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz and we'll see you tomorrow uh, for day 94. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.